Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. It's time to continue on with my money making method and glitches week. This time with the Suzuki Escudo Pikes Peak, the returning favorite. Now in terms of the car itself, thankfully this is one of the surviving glitch builds from update 1.49. So without further ado, let's jump in and crack on with this build. So I do want to give a big thank you to Sagittarius A Star who has this livery for the Escudo Pikes Peak. Now, as you can see, it does have a bit of a hidden surprise, but I'll leave that one down to you guys to find. So let's jump into it. So there's only really one thing that you need to change on this car. You want to ensure that your wheels are the biggest one with the wide offset and all that good stuff. So let me give you an example here. We're going to run the 20 inch diameter. We're going to run the wide width and the wide offset. And that's all you need in terms of aero parts and wheels. Where it gets a little bit strange though is with the actual tuning sheet. So you're going to run the front tires on comfort hards and the rear on racing intermediate. Body height is 76 at the front and 93 at the rear. Anti-roll bar is 7 at the front and then it's going to be a very minute one at the rear. Compression is 35 front and 37 at the rear. Expansion 45 front and 47 at the rear. Natural frequency is 5.00 at the front and 4.70 at the rear. Negative camber angle 2.5 front and 1.3 at the rear. And then on to toe angle, which is going to be 0.10 outwards at the front and 0 at the rear. Now in terms of the differential, the torque is 21, acceleration is 38 and braking is at 50. The front rear torque distribution, you can do this as you wish, but I recommend 50-50. Fully customizable racing transmission, set it to 360, and here are the manual adjustments. Final is 2.230, SIF is 1.470 dash 332, 1.714-274 for fifth. Fourth is going to be 2.095-224. Third is 2.687-175. Second is going to be 3.616-130. And then on to the final gear ratio, which is going to be the first at 5.287-89. Now in terms of the ballast, I'm going to set this at 1. Now if you do move it anywhere too much, it's going to jump the PP rating back to realistically where it should be. So keep the ballast at 1, and again, the same with the positioning. Just be very careful, you move it too much, it's going to just jump out of the glitch. So minus 46 for that. Then in terms of the aero, it's going to be downforce at the front at 200, and at the rear is going to be 700 we then add on the high rpm turbocharger and that's going to be a lot now again with the aero it's best to set it to this exact rating because again if you move it it's going to jump out the glitch and you're not going to be able to get it under that 600 pp barrier so there we go that is a tuning sheet relatively simple now in terms of the difficulty this might be a bit weird for some but you actually want to run it on the hardest difficulty just trust me on this Next up, the event is going to be over in Asia and it's going to be at Tokyo Expressway in Japan. You're then looking for the following event, which is the 12 lap World Touring Car 600 event. Yeah, it will have a maximum reward of 550,000 credits. As you can see, the PP rating is 600 or less. Nitrous is prohibited. And then there's your rewards and your typical opponents. So without further ado, let's jump into the actual talk about the build. This is a long term favorite for many, many people when it comes to GT7. Once the Tomahawk got patched out, the Suzuki Escudo kind of just took over from there. And thankfully, even after 1.49, this glitch is still fully working and pretty much unchanged. It might not be as quick as it once was. It was previously a sub 22 minute build. And whilst it does still have the potential to do that you're probably more than likely looking in the very low 23 minutes there's only a few second difference between the pre 149 physics and the post 149 physics in terms of the car itself it is purely a wall ride build again try driving this without wall riding and you're probably not going to be in it for a good time at all so use that to your advantage because tokyo's penalty limits are very very relaxed there's only a few specific things that i'll point out in this video that's going to lose you that clean race bonus so let's get into the actual strategy itself it's super simple to run once you get straight into the race keep your car at fuel mix one then avoid all of the ai opponents and just floor it all the way down to turn one you should be able to get the lead nice and early and at that point you're just going to slingshot yourself around turn one's barrier 
that is literally all you need to do very simple at that point you're pretty safe for a good amount of laps in terms of the camera i do recommend the likes of bumper cam or bonnet cam again it just gives you a better example of where you're going to be for the actual war ride itself all you need to do is just control the revs in terms of the escudo it does have insane uh, anti-lag and a pretty ridiculous amount of turbo lag as well so just be aware that sometimes the engine might start bogging itself down now as you can see what you want to be doing is fuel mix six for the majority of the track and then turn it up to one to get yourself launched down that main street and then again tone it down again now that is one of the penalty areas if you run that white line or hit those cones at the back that is your clean race bonus gone the other way to lose it is actually going to be with the ai themselves as previously mentioned if you hit them you are guaranteed to lose that clean race bonus so just take care and that is why we're going to run the game on hard this way we're reducing the amount of lapping we're doing with the AI and you'll probably only see them a couple of times rather than the extra times you may get if you're on those easier difficulties. We're just speeding them up, we're much faster than them and we can just wall ride out of the way. But again, just be aware to try your best to predict what the AI is going to do. So you will actually need to pit with this build. I do recommend it either the end of lap 6 or lap 7. Now, don't actually change your tyres. I know it gives you the option to, but there's no reason to. You're just going to add extra time to the pit stop. Honestly, with the intermediates completely burnt out, the comfort hards will last the entire race. But again, we're not really using those tyres as grippy tyres at all all they are pretty much useless and just there to kind of help the car drive uh, but that is pretty much it now in terms of the fuel again it's up to you whether you want to do the dot or take a full tank if you take a full tank you've got a bit more to play around with uh, towards the end of the race so as soon as you come out the pits boot it to fuel mix one get up to speed and then rinse and repeat with fuel mix six and fuel mix one however with that extra fuel typically right at the end of lap 10 is when i'll boost the engine up to fuel mix one for the rest of the race as i'll typically have enough fuel to spare to just get those faster laps in and get done and dusted quicker now again prior to this update this was a 22 minute run however unfortunately it has slightly increased with the new physics however it's only by a couple of seconds even on a pretty poor run like this one it was a 23 28.112 a fastest lap on the final lap of a 1 minute 52.101 so honestly i do have a couple of the other glitch builds to go to to see if they've managed to survive but it is great that suzuki is still fully working and as useful as it always been now in terms of the payout it's 825k in around about 23 minutes or so it averages out to around about 2 million plus credits every single hour anyway a massive thank you to all of my channel members and a big thank you to you guys watching today i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day take care guys peace